And now a look at Lost Cities Rivals, a two to four player version of the classic two player card game, Lost Cities. Cosmos was cool enough to send us a review copy of this game. No other compensation was provided. All right, Lost Cities Rivals was designed by Rainier Nitzia, one of the most well-known and respected names in the gaming industry whatsoever. Uh, it features artwork from Sebastian Cavio. Now, here in North America, it's put out by Thames and Cosmos. Uh, Lost Cities Rivals plays two to four players, and a game takes about 45 minutes or less. For a look at the cards and tokens you get with Lost City Rivals, check out our unboxing video on YouTube. Now, in addition to the expected cards, this game does come with a number of gold coin tokens. Uh, they're about the quality you'd expect from any good hobby board game. Now, the cards themselves were decent quality, but not great. This is a game where you're going to do a lot of shuffling, a lot of handling of the cards. Uh, this is one of those games where I can see if you sleeve cards, you're going to want to sleeve this. If you are a card sleever, just do it right from the start. Uh, if you're not a card sleever, you still might want to consider it. So how about an overview of how you play Lost City Rivals and how it differs, differs from the original Lost City? Yes. So in this case, I am definitely going to be comparing the two. I, to me, you can't help it. It is meant to be a multi multiplayer version of Lost Cities. It says Lost Cities right in the box. So while I will mention if I think the game stands out on its own, I, I think you have to compare these games. Now, the theme is identical. Uh, you are explorers going on expeditions, and these expeditions are represented by sets of cards in one of five colors, and each color represents a different terrain type. Wagers can be made before starting an expedition to increase the score of that expedition. Now, physically, an expedition is represented by a set of numbered cards in ascending order, potentially starting with a number of wagers. Now, interestingly, I hadn't played Lost Cities at all before I played this. And to me, the name Rivals, based on a lot of the other game uh, evolutions, sounded like the two-player variant of the game. It's like, you know, you, you go to Seven Wonders, you go to Seven Wonders Duel, you know. I, but it is, in fact, the other way around. Yeah. It's actually gone from a two-player game to a multiplayer game. I did the game industry in general, with both of our reviews tonight, you have a game called Duet that's actually a team-based game with two teams. And now you have a game called Rivals, which is up to four players. They players need to decide. We'll just start calling it the two player version and then it'd be totally clear, though it won't sound as good. So unlike Lost Cities and Lost City Rivals, you this is not a card game where you have a hand of cards. Instead, cards are auctioned from a central play area and then purchased to be put into a player's individual tableau. Now at the start of a game of Lost Cities Rivals, each player is randomly assigned two starting wager cards of different colors. The rest of the cards are shuffled, split into four equal sized decks. You pick one of those decks to start the game with. The gold coins are then split evenly among the players with any remainder left as a bank. Starting with the first player, determined randomly, each player has two options on their turn. Either flip over the top card of the deck and place it next to the deck, building a, slowly building a tableau as time goes on, or start an auction for those cards that are on display. Now, during an auction, the active player bids one or more of their gold coins for the cards in the main tableau. The next player can then up or pass. This continues around the table. Once you pass, you're out. Eventually, you're going to have just one bidder because everyone's passed. They pay their coins to the bank. Now, the auction winner can take any number of the cards from the central playing area and keep them for themselves in their own tableau. They can lose some behind. They also can choose one card to remove from the game. Any remaining cards in the tableau just stay up for the next auction. Now, placing cards into your tableau does have a bunch of rules around it. There are some restrictions. So each color or suit of card goes in its own row, and you can only have one row for each type out of the five. Wager cards can only be played on other wager cards or used to start a new row. And once a number card has been played, all future number cards played on that row must be a higher number than the last one played. Note, the placement rules here are identical to the original Lost City. So if you know the original game, the card placement rules are the same. So again, mechanics are certainly simple enough. Auction, places in the original game, rinse and repeat. Pretty much it. Now, after an auction, the player to the left of the winning bidder becomes the next start player and continues the game. Again, they're either going to flip a card or start a new auction. When the active deck runs out, everyone gets money again. And this is really well done. All the gold coins in the bank are just evenly split between all the players. So everyone is constantly getting a refresh of money, which I thought was really well done. Uh, any... Leftover money, it stays in the bank if it's not divided evenly. 
when the last card of the last deck is flipped face up, the game ends immediately. So those last cards that are still up don't get auctioned, which is important when trying to count cards. So the strength of the game lays in its simplicity, but then I suspect fans of the original would expect nothing less. Yeah. Now, scoring is definitely simpler. So this is this is taking things to an easy level, to be honest, as far as I'm concerned, because it's based on the number of footprint symbols shown on the cards in each player's tableau. Whereas Lost Cities, it's based on the card value. So there's a lot more math there. Now, similar to Lost Cities, wager cards are still multipliers. One wager is going to double your points, two triples your points, three quadruples your points. Uh, then you also get bonus points if you manage to make a set consisting of at least four number cards. No, not wagers. They don't count. Now, unlike Lost Cities, there's no penalty applied for starting an expedition. In the original game, if you start building a set of cards, you want to get that up there because you're going to start with negative points. That is not in this game, which is a little weird because they still call them wager cards, except that you're not really wagering anything. They could just be called point multiplier cards. I, I'm guessing they just kept the name because they were called wager cards in the original. So we all know what, uh, how to play. What did you think of the game? Well, to start off, I feel I have to say that I am a huge fan of the original Lost Cities. I would go so far as say a fanboy here. Um, now it's not even just called Lost Cities because it's now Lost Cities, the original card game. And that's so it doesn't get confused with this Lost Cities Rivals or the Lost Cities board game. So there are a bunch of different ones out there. And others might know the Celtis games, which is another Nitzia game that yeah. is similar, almost a retheme, but not quite. There's a, a couple of different mechanics. Uh, I know I actually finally got to learn both Celtis and Lost Cities through the Happy Meeple website when we were exploring some of the online board games out there. And they have both of those available on Happy Meeple. And so that's where I finally got my first yeah. taste of the original Lost Cities. Now, my first taste of the original Lost Cities actually comes from one of our local downtown coffee shops, uh, the Coffee Exchange, uh, by, owned by Ron Bala, who we've actually mentioned on the show a few times. Big gamer. He's always had a number of board games on hand in his coffee shop for customers to play. One of those was Lost Cities. And one afternoon, sitting having a coffee on Deanna's lunch break, uh, when she worked at the library, we read the rules and taught us how to play, and we were instantly hooked. And to this day, I still think Lost Cities is one of the best two-player board games out there, period. Again, I'd never played it when I sat down to play Rivals, so I wasn't coming in with any preconceptions at all about this game when I played it. Yeah. Now, looking at Rivals. So first off, it's a much lighter game. There are fewer decision points, fewer things to remember. Uh, the lower number cards, there's two of each, so trying to form card sets is actually easier. Uh, Rivals is also more forgiving. There's no penalty for starting an expedition that basically goes nowhere. Whereas in the original game, you start with negative 20 points by just starting an expedition. Now, what this means without that penalty is there's no reason not to draft cards of every color. You also never have to worry about giving an opponent a vital card. Whereas in the original game, anything you discard, your opponent can pick up. Well, there's no discarding now. You're just buying from a tableau. Rivals is easier to teach. It's quicker to master, but I got to say, being quicker and easier doesn't necessarily mean it's more fun. I got to say, the first couple times we played this, this game fell flat. Uh, we first tried it out. I tried it out two-player at one of our easy mode game nights here in Windsor, and I really didn't enjoy it. Like, I don't think I've found an auction-based game that works with two players. Like, auction games just shouldn't be two-player games. Now, I'll admit, I gave it a couple more tries after that, and no, I... This shouldn't say two players on the box. Lost Cities Rivals is not a two-player game. This should say it is a three- to four-player game right on the box. Plus, if you want to play Lost Cities with two people, play Lost Cities. Don't play Rivals. It's in a great game. Just go get Lost Cities. Now, as for playing with more players, I have had surprisingly mixed results. The first few games, again, at public play events, didn't go over well. Uh, one local gamer, a game designer, did think the auction mechanic was cool and the way money refreshed part way through was rather brilliant and i totally agree with him but found the rest of the game just boring now personally i thought it did some neat things but i didn't find it as fun as the original now a couple of other players did not enjoy the experience at all and weren't even interested in giving the game a second try after learning how to play and sean was one of those so yeah i played this uh with four at easy mode and i think falling flat is a bit polite in my for, for me <laughs> 
Uh, I think it was pretty horrible. Now, honestly, I almost didn't try Lost Cities when I found it on Happy Meeple because I was dreading the experience I had playing Lost City Rivals. There you go. Dreading the experience. So not a good first experience with this game whatsoever. Now, fast forward to last weekend. I am playing this game with a totally different group of people. Not totally different. I guess half of us were this. No, Deanna didn't play in that game the one time. So I was the same three other players with a, with a different group of players. And I had a completely different experience. Here I was playing with Deanna, my sister-in-law, Holly, who also used to meet Deanna downtown and play Lost Cities with her at the coffee exchange. And then Deanna's mother, who learned the original game from Holly and also enjoys it. Both of them like Lost Cities. The original and like Lost City Rivals a lot, actually. And I found that their enjoyment of the game spread to myself and Deanna. Like, we were enjoying it more. Like, I, I can't stress how shocked we were. Like, this is one of those, like, we're looking at each other. We're playing through these rounds of Lost City Rivals with immediate family, and we're expecting to have the easy mode experience again, right? We're expecting it to flop. And here we are being engaged, counting cards, backstabbing each other and taking part in some really cutthroat tight auctions and like looking at each other, going, well, what just happened? Wait, was that as much fun as it like what happened? So what changed? Right. But like, like looking at it in retrospect, why did this happen? And well, the main difference between these plays is the play experience of the people we played with and who we were playing with. Now, the first group, the group at easy mode had no experience with Lost Cities. Um, with the, the, the way you stack your cards and the wager mechanics that are really core to the game. Whereas the second group knew the original game really well. Now, what this means is that the players who didn't know the original game didn't really know the value of the various cards on display in the central tableau when bidding on the game's many auctions. So both versions of Lost Cities are also rather math-heavy games requiring card counting to play well, and that's not going to appeal to every gamer. There is a really good chance, in my opinion, I don't know if this is true, that the players in the first group probably wouldn't have enjoyed playing the original Lost Cities either, just they weren't there, that style of game. The Nitzia math with the theme pasted on it just wasn't interesting. Yeah, now, I don't know if I've ever actually even really talked about this on, in, on the show in the past, but I don't count cards. Um, I think I could. But I would need to put so much focus on that that my because my brain doesn't do it well that yeah. it would reduce my enjoyment of the gaming experience, which is a large part of the reason why I game. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't. Um, and then as a result, games that really require that card counting tend to fall flat with me. And yep. really, that I think is sort of the root of why Rivals is not for me. And that's it, right? That's that's the, the final answer. That's the solution here is Lost Cities Rivals is very much not for everyone. It's a math-heavy, card-counting card game with a very solid auction mechanic that isn't going to appeal to all groups. Like, I personally thought it was decent, those first couple plays, and grew to rather enjoy it in the end, but that was based on who I was playing with. Playing with players who are taking the time to count the cards and being careful with their bidding and knowing how to value what's up there based on what they have as well as what the opponents have made the game a lot more enjoyable than playing it with people who are just playing a game and kind of playing randomly in a way. But while I enjoy both Lost Cities and Celtus, Rivals for me is a pass. And I suspect this sort of reaction is really what's keeping it well down in the rankings compared yeah. to its original version. Now, despite rowing to enjoy the game, uh, I probably will keep it in my collection. I do strongly think that the original is the better game. Uh, the only advantage Rivals has to me over Lost Cities is the fact it plays three or four players. Whereas Lost Cities, you're stuck with two, no matter what. And I got to say, like, honestly, if I had four people and two copies of Lost Cities and a copy of Rivals, I'm probably more likely to play two different games of Lost Cities, unless the group really wants to all play a game together. Um, if you enjoy the little original Lost Cities and you're like, man, we always have groups of three or four and you never get your game copy played because you always have big groups and not two, you might want to check out Rivals. Uh, I do have to say, if you've never played a Lost Cities game before, this could be a good introduction because it is lighter and it is more forgiving and it is a little easier. 
uh if you're looking for a new two-player game don't grab this honestly like just go buy lost cities or something else completely but in all cases like i i say this often but this is definitely a try before you buy there i this is not a game i can recommend for every group out there this game does not have universal appear appeal it's only going to appeal to certain people people who like nizia's games are probably going to like this if they like their math game style games if you like your your pasted on math game pasted on theme your theme pasted on math you'll probably dig this game even if you like other kinds of games you might like this one but yeah try before you buy here uh hate saying that sometimes but this is definitely one that not everyone is going to enjoy and i'm not sure if you can find rivals anywhere but the original lost cities and you can find on the happy meeple website uh to give it a try there for free and there is an app race version of that as well which the happy meeple i think is just a port of the app it seems identical could be well for a more in-depth look at lost city rivals you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews